Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my books for the spring. Now, the spring for me, for starters, is March, April, May. And the spring is one of my favourite seasons. It is full of hope. It's full of flowers appearing, new life coming into focus. It's got great birthdays, great events. It's literally the best season ever. So we have Mother's Day. We have Mother's Day in March. We have Easter. Eight, which is normally in April. We have um, birthdays. We have my birthday, my mum's birthday in March. We have Thomas's in April. We have Mia's in May. And we have the start of this is where the year just everything, life becomes into bloom. We start going outside more. We start being able to go for walks. We start enjoying the, the start of the year. And literally, I could not love the spring more. Let me know in the comments down below, by the way, what do you love about the spring? I would love to hear. So I picked books for the spring. Now books for me for the summer and winter are a lot easier. A lot more books with those sort of titles in there. So with spring I had to go a bit more off of them. One of the books for the spring Mia has picked and that book will be ready in May for her birthday month. We've got um, books that have already been decided that are March and they are the last three books because I've already set my TBR already. Yes, I think in advance. But there are other books that will be for either April or May, and I'd love you to let me know when you think I should read them. This is the second time I've filmed this, because I realised I had two books by the same author, and that's going to change. So I picked... First book I've got for this spring is A Place of Secrets. You will see a lot of garden and a lot of outside outdoors in the covers of this, so I have gone quite cover-related. I love Rachel Hall's book, um, and I'm really looking forward to this. This is quite a historically fiction book, can dreams be passed on down through families? As a child, Jude suffered a recurrent nightmare, running through a dark forest, crying for his mother. Now her six-year-old niece, Summer, is having the same dream and Jude is frightened. Oh, it sounds very interesting. A successful auctioneer, Jude struggles when coming to, terms for the coming to terms with the death of her husband. When she's asked to value a collection of scientific experiments, instruments and manuscripts belonging to Anthony Wickham, the lonely 18th century astronomer, she leaps to the chance to escape London to the untamed beauty of Norfolk where she grew up. And as Jude untangles Wickham's tragic story, she discovers a threatening link to the present. What have summer's nightmares been to do with the Starborough Folly, the eerie crumbling tower in the woods from Wickham, and his adopted daughter Esther, who once viewed the night sky? This looks really good. I'm really looking forward to that. But April or May, let me know what you think. Now, the, probably the most recent book I bought, and I believe I bought this not long ago at Fast Books, and that is The Kitchen Front. Now, to me, this epitomises the spring as well. You've got the lovely outdoors, you've got going on a bike, you've got where... Don't ever get me on a bike, it's a disaster. But you can imagine, that oh, was a great British Bake Off set in World War II. Now, I've got a new oven. I might even try baking with my new oven, because my old oven didn't bake very well. But this... Again, you're thinking about cooking cakes and things like that. That to me is like Easter, spring things. Some wars will be fought at home. Two years into the Second World War and German U-boats are frequently disrupting the United Kingdom's supply of food. In an effort to help housewives with food rationing, a BBC radio programme called The Kitchen Front launches a cooking contest and a grand prize is the job as the first show's first ever female co-host. For young widow Audrey, winning the competition could be the chance to pay off her husband's debts and keep the roof over her children's heads. However, her estranged sister Gwendolyn is equally set on success, even if her own kitchen maid Nell is competing against her. Just looks really good. Looks like a bit of competitive sisters, kitchen, spring, definitely. Now this is the next book is the one I pretty much have decided that, actually I've just remembered I've got to write that the kitchen front down on my list because I've changed my list. And you know me, I am what it is. And the next one is The Bells of Bourneville Green. This is perfect, because it's, to me, Bourneville Green is where they where they make Cadbury's, and Cadbury's is Easter. Cadbury's is Easter eggs, it's chocolate, it's a brilliant. I read the first book in the series, and this is the second, and the third came out recently. I got this, I think, online, I think. And this is the epic saga will have you gripped from start to finish. Con continuing the saga began in the chocolate girls, which I liked. 
This is the story of families whose lives are entwined of loving, loss and a young girl's search for a transforming love. It's, this is in 1962. A pretty 17-year-old pretty Greta finds life at home hard. She has no father and loathes her mother's latest boyfriend. She's happiest at work with her friends at the Cadbury factory, where she is popular with the boys. When a missing vixen of a sister, Marlene, turns up during the worst winter for decades, Greta decides that she has to get away and the only escape route is marriage. However, she finds that her life with her old classmate Trevor is not what she hoped and the freedom she, and happiness still eludes her. She finds herself on the streets, pregnant and homeless, until her mother's friend, Edie and Ant Antonotoli, take her in and provide the safe haven she never had known. That looks really good. It does look a bit hard-hitting, but it's Bourneville Green, chocolate, Cadbury's. What do I think? So I've pretty much decided that's April. Now, the next author is one that again springs out spring and summer to me. All of Ali McNamara's books are spring and summer. I, I'm tempted to read this in May because in May we are doing a read-along of Chronic Pay of the Invisible Disabilities read-along that I'm hosting with Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. And this author... So I pretty much have decided this is a May book. And this author is has chronic pain. So I think I'll pretty much probably do read it for that. Sneaky peek, that's probably going to be a May book. But again, this really does look at spring or summer. And this is Letters from the Lighthouse Cottage. Seaside, this is outdoorsy. Um, the sun is shining on the quiet sea, little seaside town of Sandy Bridge. Sandy Bridge is perfect English seaside town, home of gift shops, tea room and fabulous fish and chip shop. And it's home to Grace, although right now she's not too happy about it. Grace grew up in Sandy Bridge, helping her parents sort drunk, drunk from village treasures. But she's always longed to escape, and she made it travel. She made it, travelling for her job and falling in love. Then why is she back at the lovely, the tiny seaside town she'd hoped to leave behind, hanging out with Charlie, the boy who became her best friend when they were teenagers? Yeah, I'm wondering what this is going to be like. I think that's a May book. I'm going to sneak it in. Oh, what am I doing? I'm not, I said you guys could vote in the half of these books. I've pretty much decided. The next one is a book that Chris bought me for Christmas. But again, this looks really spring. And this is The Secret Life of Anne, Albert Entwistle. Chris bought me this for Christmas. And this is actually the second Christmas book I've got. But I've read that this author's got a latest release um, that's come out this year. And it's had rave reviews. And I've actually heard this has actually had rave reviews. And this is Living Alone... In, since the death of his mum, 64-year-old postman Elva Entwistle keeps himself to himself. So one morning, back from delivering mail, full of life and love that no one ever shares with him, Albert is surprised to find himself in receipt of a letter. The contents shock him. With no friends and nothing to look forward to, his future looks lonely and frightening. It's not the first time that Albert has received a letter that will change his life, and this time around he knows what to do. The time has come for him to face the secret he's been keeping for nearly 50 years. This looks really good. April or May, what do you reckon? Let me know down below. The next one is a book that I recently bought. I think I bought this. Actually, you might not have even seen this book. Yeah, because this is going to go on my March book and my February book haul. So this is a book you may not have even seen yet, but I bought it, so it'll be in my February book haul. And this is Confessions of an Allergic Good Girl by Jaya Joffrey. It has actually been picked for May because Mia picked it for me. So I will talk about this a little bit more, possibly in the book haul. I'm not sure yet because my book haul is going to be massive. This, apparently, this has got some stuff that also will work for the maid along. Monique lives a perfect life as a preacher's daughter and girlfriend of the town's golden boy. But it's not that simple. She's torn between her parents, who want to, her to remain their pure virgin, virginal daughter, and her boyfriend, Dom, who wants to explore the more intimate side of the relationship. Don't want to know any more than that. This does look really good. And I'm really hoping, but Charlie, my sister Charlie's read this or has heard about it and apparently has got some hard hitting issues. So this is definitely a May. And I'll go through them in a bit and work, tell you which ones you can let me know. The next three are March, so that is set. The next one is a book that I bought, that I got given to from for my Christmas from Danny from Danny's Bookshelf. Danny's Book World, I, I love Danny. This is again a sunshine book. It's perfect for March. Walking on Sunshine. I really cannot wait. This is going on my March TBR. I love Giovanna Fletcher's work. It's a contemporary. I nearly bought it in hardback, so I'm definitely glad I bought it in paperback. It's had mixed reviews on Goodreads, but I'm hoping I will love it. I'm sure I will love it. After Mike loses Pia, his daughter, his partner 
17 years. Best friends Vicky and Zara are running around. But the truth is, in, Pip, in Pip's, Pip, Pia's absence, they all need more than a little help. Just engage Zaza fears the next step. Mum Vicky has lost sight of herself and Mike can't figure out how to start again. Luckily, Pia left a list of loving instructions to help them both cope. This looks like it's going to be emotional. Potentially break me. But it does look really good. The next two are books that you will see. They are perfect mother books. And for Mother's Day, the first one is Mothers and Daughters by Erica James. Um, I got given this by a lovely booktube friend for Christmas. And as I say, it's a good the gift receipt. I think it was bought for me from Andrea, Andrea, Andrea Ryan, who Andrea always is one of my best, well, a lovely subscriber. I've wanted this for a while and I wanted this, I think, when it came out in hardback. Erica James is a really favourite author of mine and she writes a mixture of historical fiction and contemporaries. But mothers and daughters, well, I've got a daughter and a son, but, and I've also got my mum. Um, so to me, this was just a book that I really wanted. It will probably be read around about Mother's Day. Even happily families have their secrets. Anchor House is the coastal town home of where Naomi and her husband raised their two girls. Now widowed, Naomi is building a new life alone. And the arrival of Ellis next door is bringing some long awaited fun back too. Naomi's daughters are very different. Martha is, driven, is determined and driven like her father. Well, Willow is a free spirit. All th the three women have always been close, but that doesn't mean they don't have secrets of their own. There are things Naomi has kept from the girls, like the fact that her marriage to their father wasn't quite what it seemed. God, I want this book. I hope I can wait till Mother's Day, but this does look like one I am so excited about. And it's one that's going to be on the thumbnail. So you would have already seen them. The next one is another book that yeah, this is Gemma, who was previously read, read a book, Gem, gave me this. M is for Mummy. The family that doesn't fit the mould, so what? Again, my mum. Lucy had it all. An exciting career, a rock star husband, great friends and pelvic floor muscles that could crack, crack a walnut. And then she had kids. Since giving birth to her second child, Lucy's life is unrecognisable. The romance in her marriage is officially dead, and so is the career it, it took years to build. Instead of playing cello behind the superstar at packed out arenas, Naomi now, Lucy now spends most days mopping up broccoli vomit while listening to her four-year-old recite facts about the gallbladder. Something needs to change. With a little help from her friends, Lucy comes up with a plan to get her life back on track, claw back her career and find in it her extraordinary son a place to, in, it, in, it's not, in an ordinary world. Oh, it's yellow, look! That's another spring colour. I haven't even seen the naked hardback. Oh. Love the Naked Hardback, that's gorgeous. So yeah, this is a hardback, it's probably, it probably is the only hardback here. It's a chunkier book, but the print is massive. So again, this side shows the other sides of motherhood, so this will be a perfect March book. This is not a long video, I've got loads to do today, the joys of motherhood and my own work, life balance. But, what books are you looking forward to in May? The books that I would like you to tell me which month you think I should read them for are... A Place of Secrets, The Kitchen Front, The Secret Life of Al and The Secret Life of Albert Entwistle. What months do you think I should read those in? One of them has got space for May and the other two will be in April because May is definitely going to be Confessions of a Good Girl and Letters from Light Lighthouse Cottage. And what books are you excited about in May? I would love in the spring. What does spring mean to you? Let me know in the comments down below. I love chatting to you all in the comments. It makes me so happy. And I hope spring is everything all of you could wish for. Take care. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribed yet, ring on my ding-a-ling and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.